Good morning and welcome to the show for February 7th. I'm Kelly Powell and I'm joined by Shaylin Ackerman. We were off last week as everybody took advantage of course preview day and hopefully are in the final phase of submitting a thoughtful schedule request for next year during advisory today. On the show today, Tyler Hinton investigates the state of our weight room. The CTV sports team has been busy collecting images for this week's update. Kylie and I ventured out for another installment of Kylie on Campus. And we'll get you caught up on all the campus happenings. Welcome to the show. The weekend of January 27th, the Model United Nations Club competed in San Jose. The team was able to capture six awards in this live competition. Award winners included Lauren Maynard, Jaden Garofalo, Jade Tamong, and Jillian Brunoli, with Bryson Kassler and Matt Kisner earning verbal commendations. The team will be back in action in March when they travel to the Rome International Model UN Competition, where they will engage with upwards of a thousand students from all around the world. The senior portrait deadline for the yearbook was extended until February 28th. If you had a senior portrait taken, you can find all the information you need to submit it on the yearbook webpage. Photographer Julie Walton will be on campus Thursday to take free senior portraits during Flex. Any senior that would like something more than their school ID is welcome to sign up for Mr. Wolf's Flex and take advantage of this offer. Meet in the Media Hub 403. While we're on the topic of yearbook, CTV would like to thank the tiny volunteer team of students led by Jasmine Tamang for all the still images you see on this show, on the LED screens, and eventually a yearbook. It is no small task, and we appreciate the Evergreen Yearbook team for doing this valuable work. The weight room attached to Gym C is a central facility for our PE program and our athletic programs. Reporter Tyler Hinton and camera op Charlie Satterley explored the mental and physical benefits of weight training, as well as the state of the facility. The weight room at Colfax has been a place for students and athletes to enhance not only their physical fitness but their mental health along with it. Um, it allows us to be able to go through obstacles that certain people wouldn't be able to. We're allowed to, we can defeat certain tasks that other people couldn't due to our physical ability. It makes us feel better about ourselves and it helps our mental state. Athletic programs utilize the weight room through rigorous exercise and conditioning for their athletes' benefit in their sport of choice. The weight room impacts the football program in that the bigger, stronger, and faster that you are, the greater advantage you have on the football field. Um, that the ballistic nature of the way that we lift weights is a direct carryover to the way that football is played. You know, weight training can really um, increase an athlete's agility, strength, speed, um, that can give them an advantage on the court um, or on the fields in, in a way that you know they otherwise would not have. Unfortunately, the weight room has become a facility not fit to serve those who seek the benefits that are obtained through weight training. I think that, number one, if you compare our weight room to any other public high school in Placer County, it would not be one of the nicest, it would probably be one of the uh, lowest quality facilities. Number two, uh, renovation of the weight room is going to mean that more students and more athletes are going to be serviced by the weight room. And number three, it's going to mean enhanced quality and results uh, by redoing the weight room and by uh, getting rid of and changing out some of our weights and bars in the weight room that have been there for 30 or 40 years. Since 2002, the weight room has served as a second locker room for the football team. Teachers and coaches agree that it's time for some major changes. I think the weight room drastically needs to be improved in its current condition. Um, the equipment's old and outdated. It's not safe for the students to use, and it's doubling up as a locker room right now for the football team, which makes it not equally accessible to all students. Um, we want to revamp the inside of the weight room so that um, it is more functional to serve you know, upwards of 30, 40 students at a time um, and has more of an open concept with updated equipment, um, different bands, um, different areas for agility on the floor against the wall um, that no matter the sport or the PE program, um, everybody would have access to the right equipment um, to be able to train in a more updated style. The weight room here at Colfax is something that has served many through countless years and considering there's a half-finished remodel 20 years ago it's safe to say a remodel is well overdue. 
Reporting for CTV on behalf of Camera Up and Editor Charlie Satterley, I'm Tyler Hinton. With Course Preview Day behind us, it is time to get your applications in for both the Leadership and Link Crew programs. All you need to do is go to the announcements on the school webpage, click your application, and thoughtfully fill it out. Students will not be considered without an application. If you are thinking about adding some Colfax gear to your lineup, the Greenlight Store has you covered with their $7 t-shirt February. The Quad Crown is in full swing as we enter the second week of competition, Dodgeball Week. Reporter Samantha Reedy platt and editor Katie Marks have this Quad Crown update. Quad Crown competition has officially begun. The Mario Kart tournament kicked off the Quad Crown last week with junior leadership students chairing the event. 30 competitors competed, all vying for a top three finish, in hopes of winning the Mario tournament and winning points towards the overall crown. The races took place Monday, January 30th through Friday, February 3rd, every day at lunch. Each day the competition was cut in half, and as the fourth day of competition came to an end, four players remained, with a shot at the trophy and points. The tournament final unfolded Friday, February 3rd, and the stakes were high. Giacomo Gajero and Miles the Ring made it through the semifinals and faced off for first place. When their cars crossed the finish line, it was Miles the Ring who came out with victory. Congratulations to Aiden Reed, third place, Giacomo Gajero, second place, and our current crown leader, Miles the Ring. We hope to see you next week for the annual dodgeball tournament. It's not too late to jump in and have some Quad Crown fun, as the UNO and Ping Pong tournaments are still taking signups at the Quad Crown booth just outside the Dodgeball Arena, or better known as Gym A. The Dodgeball Tournament directors would like to remind all teams that if you get a text and are playing first on any day, you must come directly to the gym. There is no time to get lunch first. The directors are excited to have so many teams playing, but need every minute to make sure they get to a championship game on Friday. Kylie and I are having a great time getting out on campus. The experience is really unique because of how different everybody is, which is awesome. I think it's safe to say you guys are really good sports and are making this segment really fun to shoot. So without further ado, here's Kylie on campus. Kylie on campus. Campus. <laughs> No, 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 no. Every day. Got my eyeballs stuck on my play. Yay. <laughs> Shakira, Shakira. Never really knew that she could dance like this. She makes a man want to speak Spanish. Como se llama? Si, bonita, si. Mi casa, Shakira, Shakira. <laughs> I came to dance, 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 dance. Dip, 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 my hands, 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 hands. Brands, 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 brands. I'm just a small town girl living in a lonely world. Do you ever feel like a plastic bag drifting through the wind, ready to stop? No, it's wanting to start again. <laughs> Never the way I planned got my intention. <laughs> when I wounded you, picking on the weaker man. <laughs> You can bring me down with just one single touch, blow, I don't know. What you she say? say? <laughs> oh, what you only meant well. In the morning feeling like Pete did. 
Grab my glasses, I'm at the door, about to hit the city. <laughs> Will, you gotta fill me in. Like a G6. <laughs> yeah. A scrub is a guy that thinks he's fly and is also known as a buster. Always talking about what he wants and just sits on his broke. Shout out to Miss J and Miss Chauffeur for the soundtrack and Kaylin Day for the animation intro. Shay and I are scheming up a new challenge and we will see you all in campus in two weeks. Sunny days are rolling through the foothills. I see baseball and softball teams out on the fields, and it's easy to start thinking about spring, but not Katie Marks. She and the Colfax sports team are fully focused on winter sports. Katie? Thanks, Jay, and welcome back to the CTV Sports Update. Two weeks ago, we looked into what winter teams were competing and what to look forward to. Now we've crossed the midway point, and we have all the results. The snowboard team competed their fifth race of the season on Monday. On January 30th, Seth Arcan and Jack Clark's top 10 performances helped the varsity men maintain first place in the men's league. Brothers Harrison and Hudson McDonald are regularly battling it out and are two of seven racers that are in competition for state on the boys' side. The women's team still holds second place with top performances, coming from Quincy Mora and Courtney Reese. Along with Kylie Moore, this trio looks poised to make state. The combined team still sits second in league behind Chucky, but with one race left, anything is possible before the state championships that will take place at North Star this March. The team would like to encourage families to attend a fundraising event on February 11th at Needy Brewery in preparation for the state championship. Colfax's Nordic Ski Team has been all over the Sierra, and reporter Sebastian Chapellas has this highlight. Colfax's Nordic Ski Team was at the Royal Gorge Freestyle 5K two weeks ago, where sophomore Mallory Gorba placed fourth in the open category, followed by sophomore Ella Otto only three minutes behind. On the boys' side, sophomore Dylan Holloway toughed out a very difficult race, placing seventh. Senior Alex Hagen placed 12th, and sophomore Ryder Vernon 15th. Last week, it was the Mammoth 7K, which featured the longest distance and highest elevation of the entire season, at 8,500 feet. Despite racing against eight other teams in 40 mile an hour wins, sophomores Mallory Gorba, Ella Otto, Ryder Vernon, and senior Alex Hagen all placed in the top 10. Next for the team is a 5K freestyle in North Tahoe this Friday. On the court, our girls and boys basketball team faced league opponent Lynnhurst at our annual Retro Night doubleheader and dance. Reporter Shaylin Ackerman and editor Kaylin Day have this highlight. On Friday, January 27th, Colfax's girls and boys basketball teams hosted Lynnhurst for our Retro Night doubleheader and dance. After two years, leadership was eager to bring back the annual event working hard to put on an amazing night for students. As predicted, the Lady Falcons defeated Lyndhurst in a dominant 74-9 performance. The Falcons proved their defensive strength, holding the Blazers scoreless until the second quarter. In the two meetings combined, the Falcons outscored the Blazers 156-20, and in each game exceeded their scoring average of 65 points. This consistently balanced attack has helped the Falcons uphold their perfect league record of 10-0, and after a 17-point win over second-ranked Marysville on February 1st, the Lady Falcons are confident that they'll secure another league title and maintain the number one seed in the section playoffs. Following the winning trend, our boys' basketball team captured a 76-37 point win against Lyndhurst. The team's 11 threes got the offensive started, while Garrett Lewis led the way with 16 points dominating on the inside. On the defensive, the boys contained the lone Blazers' offensive threat, allowing them to secure the 39-point win. The Lyndhurst win placed the boys at sixth place in league as they head into a tough five-game stretch. Coach Ginty feels confident the boys can outperform their first-round games and secure a spot in the playoffs. With attendance from parents, future Falcons, and the Nest, the girls and boys teams had the support of the Colfax community with them as they reigned victorious on Retro Night. To end the night, the students and players celebrated at the annual Retro Dance. The boys are working through the toughest stretch of the PVL, fine-tuning their attack. The boys fell to center and league leader at Marysville last week, but closed the point gap against the Indians in their second round matchup. At the time of this recording, 
we are unable to report on results against rival Bear River, whom they played yesterday. But we wish, the, we wish them good luck as they close out league play at Sutter on Wednesday and at home for senior night on Friday. The girls defeated league opponent center in a doubleheader at the Ron Pucci Pavilion last Friday, locking up the PVL championship. The girls maintain their number one ranking in both the PVL and the section with playoffs only a week away. Our boys soccer team punched their ticket to the postseason in matches against 12 Bridges and Bear River last week. Sophomore Sawyer Tarachi came back from injury against Fall Bridges and he didn't waste any time collecting the first of a pair of goals, notched by he and senior Kenan Tomlin. The team crossed the river to face the Bruins where they notched five goals, two from sophomore Hudson McDonald and three others from senior Caleb Green, sophomore Matt Kissner, and a surprise goal from senior goalkeeper Will Stone Street. The win cemented back-to-back -back playoff berths for the Falcons. Our girls soccer team recently put up wins against Wheatland, Lyndhurst, Bear River, and on January 31st, took down 12 bridges for back-to-back -back PVL titles. Standouts, Kaya Dietrichs and Shaylin Ackerman, each scored a goal and goalkeeper, Avery Miles, and the defense knocked another shutout. Tonight, the girls have a game against Golden Sierra at home with hopes of keeping their 12 games win streak alive. In other news, Colfax Wrestling had their first and only meet on January 25th when they hosted Bear River. Alex Dreyer and Hayden Conger have the story. On the 24th of January, the CTV sports team took a deep dive into the Colfax wrestling team's only home match of the season against rival and number two ranked Bear River. Over this past season, the Colfax wrestling team has gone up against 14 different schools. From Bear River to Natomas High, the team wrestled hard and competitively all across Northern California, and at the Bear River match, junior Glenn Hubbard and sophomore Jackson Veers had one of their better performances. Although many believe wrestling to be a male-dominated sport, the Colfax wrestling team has determined women and Natalie Porter is leading the way. The team finished the PVL in fourth and individual wrestlers will have had one more shot to qualify for the postseason Saturday at the PVL Championships. Reporting for CTV with camera op and editor Hayden Conger, I'm Alexandra Dreyer. At the PVL Wrestling Championships, over the weekend, Natalie Porter became a league champion, while Blake Albert, Luke Tanini, and Lucien Bernard all made the finals, each taking silver medals. Emma Curry and Lee Krill took home bronze medals for third place. That's all I have for you today, Colfax. We will be back next week with a playoff preview. Thank you, Katie. Last semester, one of the first problems the Student Council identified on campus was long lunch lines. You spoke and leadership listened. The Student Worker Lunch Line Project is finally here and signups are live now. This is an opportunity to serve your campus and help solve this problem. As a volunteer, you can earn service hours if you're in CSF or another organization that requires hours. You simply sign up to work at a point of sale station in the cafe, handing out lunches when you can. If we get enough people, we can solve this problem together. Check your email for your chance to sign up. Well, that's all we have for you today, Colfax. We'll be back next week when reporter Kaylin Day explores some lo local Colfax history around town, and reporter Sebastian Chapellis takes us inside the Colfax technology team. I'm Shailen Ackerman for Kylie Powell. Have a good day, Colfax.